David Fenton, uh, sixth year resident, University of Connecticut Health Center, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery Residency. I uh, was uh, pursuing a career in plastic and reconstructive surgery and uh, was and discovered the opportunities of being involved in, in the uh, industry of dentistry and the relationships of dentistry, healthcare, uh, practice management, uh, and, and uh, procedural sciences and uh, was very interested in the um, avenues that oral surgery allows. The uh, patient interactions along to uh, being able to uh, manipulate tissues, diseases, help people. Uh, well, I think you know, it's a very personal decision. There's no right answer on whether four or six years or having an MD or having a single degree is better. Um, there is his personal preference and for me, uh, my main motivators was not necessarily that I wanted to pursue the MD, but more of if I have an opportunity that's provided uh, for such a prestigious degree in only two additional years, then it's well worth it. I don't know what the future entails and what if there may be any risks, limitations to not having it or any doors opened with having it. So getting additional uh, education and training is, is never a bad thing. Uh, so to me, that, that's how it became advantageous. However, I actually applied to both, interviewed at both types of programs, and there's a resident match program that puts you somewhere, so based on your rank list. Now some of this kind of call it a vacation, because work is much harder than being a student. Um, so it, it's definitely interesting because you're learning a lot of different uh, areas and fields of medicine that we otherwise have, would have no uh, contact with. Um, certainly things we study and know about in my relationship to dentistry and dental school and the practice of dentistry, but being actually involved in the care of patients and their medical conditions uh, kind of opens your eyes to what patients go through with those and it, it changes the way you look at it from the standpoint of not just how it affects the dental care, but actually knowing what patients have gone through when they have a certain condition or have had certain procedures or interventions done. Uh, and this helps uh, kind of uh, communication and relationships within the medical community and in a hospital setting. There's definitely a lot of preparation and a lot of advice I could give, certainly. I think that the main thing is, first of all, you know, why are they seeking a, a specialty in the first place? I think if somebody's looking at all residencies, they, uh, that uh, brings up a bigger question. Uh, what do they not like about general dentistry? And why not just stick with general dentistry? If they have something specifically that some area that they are more passionate about and would rather limit it their practice to that area, then that would be a reason to pursue a specialty. I think getting experience within that specialty firsthand or in internships in dental school, um, whichever way is possible, that would that open their eyes a little bit more, as well as seeing how it's done in private practice by shadowing or visiting offices um, and researching you know, through the whichever specialties association it is on the, the, the details of the scope of that specialty certainly helps um, so they can make an educated decision on what type of specialty they want to pursue. Um, I think any specialty you want, you want to pursue you have to know exactly what that specialty does, what it's limited to, and know that that's what's going to make you happy doing all the time. Some people don't want to be limited and for them that it probably is best to stick with general dentistry. The nice thing about dentistry as a, as a field is that as a general dentist you can do everything and as a specialist you're limited uh, but there's always you can't you can't be the master of everything so you can either be a jack of all trades and master of none kind of that thing um, and so if somebody if you want to particularly master one area and special and, and focus on that then maybe specializing is a good uh, path for you um, if it, and if you want to you know master certain areas but generally speaking do most things, provide most services, and have more comprehensive care and long-term follow-up and relationships with your patients, then uh, it, it's probably more important to stay in general. I think it's a, a very rewarding profession. I think it is as a, a unique uh, uh, location in healthcare that it crosses dentistry and medicine, kind of bridges the gap and communicates on both sides of uh, the healthcare there, and there is a very wide gap in healthcare when it comes to oral health and systemic health. 
and um, the, mainly from the standpoint that uh, physicians are very poorly educated on oral health and the link between oral health and necessity of oral health with well, systemic health and quality of life. Uh, and we see that in all aspects of our society and, health, and when, in healthcare respects. So the oral surgeon is able to bridge that gap as well as the scope of practice of oral surgery uh, is extremely broad going from uh, office procedures such as wisdom teeth and other dental extractions, dental implants, um, cosmetic procedures in the office and, use, and doing sedation, as operator administered sedation in the office uh, to reconstructive surgery, cancer surgery, uh, orthognathics, craniofacial surgery, uh, TMJ uh, surgical procedures. Uh, the, the variety of patients and opportunities is extremely vast. The most important thing is to know what you're getting into. I think some people hear about a profession or somebody tells them they should go into that and then just kind of start following the path that everyone is telling them is the best path without truly researching it well for themselves and getting first-hand experience in it. And it's very important because you can get into a long path that's a lot of work and a lot of compromise and sacrifice and find out that you're not happy with it. But if you make an educated decision by getting some experience in it, seeing it for yourself, and just because someone else says it's great and will love it doesn't mean you will. So making sure you actually are interested in it and like it. Um, and also looking at the long-term uh, expectations of that career is very important, especially in our, our, our uh, economic society now in this position. Um, one field or career may not be as lucrative or promising in the future, so it's important to look at that and make that prediction because that will be the career that you're entering into for the next several decades, especially if it's dentistry, any specialties, medicine, um, or anything else for that matter. So it's very important to look into those things, get the experience by doing you know, shadowing activities, internships, externships, um, whatever opportunities is allowed to get in, actually see the care done on a first-hand basis instead of just hearing about it and talking about it. So my personal experience was just, uh, like I said, I was thinking of uh, medicine and reconstructive plastic surgery, main, mainly for repair of uh, congenital defects, such as cleft lip and palate and craniofacial sores. Um, and then I had my wisdom teeth out, and I saw an oral surgeon that way, and started shadowing there to see what the surgery from that standpoint was. The, before that, I didn't know what oral and maxillary surgery was at all, or that it even was a profession, and never considered dentistry. Um, and then, as I compared the future of medicine and the future of dentistry, in my view, uh, the, the freedoms, the um, amount of advocacy for dentistry uh, was appealing to me, and uh, so that's kind of why I went that route. So, I dental school, um, and when I applied to dental school, I mainly went geographic first based on where I had family, um, I could move to an area near family and apply to the dental schools in those regions. And then um, went to the one that I thought, after getting accepted, went to the one that I thought was the best uh, for exper clinical experience, as well as other factors like location, um, cost, uh, and uh, reputation. And then after, so I mainly went to dental school for oral surgery, so then the whole time I was in dental school I was uh, trying to gear my training and my resume for getting into oral surgery residency. So I did multiple externships, uh, worked hard to get good grades, have a high class uh, ranking, and be involved in community activities, research, and, um, and then applied to multiple residencies. Again, for the most part, I did that geographically and then also specific residencies that I heard had very good reputations for clinical experience. And uh, then after that, the, the red, there's a residency match program. so. Once you've applied, places go, uh, uh, invite you for an interview, and after the interview, you rank all the programs that you interviewed at, and the programs interview everyone that they ranked. And there's a mas national match service, which somehow aligns people with to try to make the highest ma uh, rankings for both parties. And man, you're always kind of.